Hello, everybody. Um, so for today's video, I'm building something for Pixie Bricks' Sidebar Summer, which if you haven't heard of, I'll include a link to it. And it's basically an event this whole month where we're learning how to make different things with sidebar panels and solving different things there. So the problem I wanted to solve is when I open a PR uh, for work, I'm a developer, and PR is basically merging pull request, um, which means code that I've changed that I want to merge into our main base. Um, I have a checklist of things that I want to make sure I do before I actually click that open PR button. And that just kind of helps make sure a little bit of quality control, right? It makes sure I'm actually checking for things and not missing any stupid errors that my team might have to notice and call out when I'm when they're reviewing the PR. So here's I'm going to show how it works and how I built it. So first of all, your developer, there's various ways you can open a pull request, but I sometimes alternate between the uh, the editor over here. And so go over here and you hit um, create pull request and notice what happened. First of all, um, it created this um, page and it assigned me to the issue and then popped up the sidebar with these various checklist items. So it's I'm not going to read every one of them here, but it's you can make these whatever you want. These are basically sort of standard things that I want to personally make sure I do before I actually open a PR. And so I have to check off every item in that list. And you'll notice right now, before I check everything, the open PR button, it, it's typically right here. It's hidden. I can't do anything with it. Watch when I hit ready to open. It makes that create pull request button available now. And so this is a good way to make sure that like, I like that we have some checklist items in the template of a PR. But... I can easily ignore those and just open the PR anyways. Whereas this new extension forces me to actually acknowledge all of those things. I mean, obviously it doesn't check if I've done them, but it at least forces me to check and acknowledge that I've done them. Otherwise I can't actually click that PR button. So just to show you how I set it up. So first of all, I started with a trigger and I told it to run on um, github.com slash elastic, which is where I work. And funnily enough, it was real. this was the trickiest part I couldn't say, hey, do it on Elastic Star um, Compare. I had all sorts of trouble with that because it was like, it was something about how like this isn't really a real URL yet. I, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but that wasn't working. But what I did find out, if you go in the advanced settings, you can basically use a selector and tell it to look for that PR button. So let's just say I'm about to make a new PR. Um, oh, it's funny. It's, it's probably going to do my whole thing since I've created it, but um Notice this button right here. Uh, it has the same code like right on here. Yeah, see, my thing's actually going to run. But you could see this is the class for what that button would be. And so you add that in there. And so um, we're saying, hey, go watch for when that button shows up. And if a page has that button, then run all of these actions. So if I have the ability to open a PR, do these things. So first of all, I'm going to hide that button. So the exact same thing we just watched for up here, I'm going to say, go find that button and hide it. And this is the um, hide brick. Next one I want is show sidebar, add that brick. And just, I'm going to say open PR, which is what I've called this, this panel. So it'll that way open up directly to that one. Next, I'm going to add a simulated DOM event brick. And what I'm doing here is this is where I'm self-assigning. So notice if I clear assignees, clear assignees does not want to clear me. Let's see. I wonder if Pixie Bricks is being smart and actually just assigning it to me. But um, as soon as I remove myself, that could be happening. But basically what it's doing is, yeah, see, so notice this assign yourself button. Pretty much what I just did is used a selector to go select that. And this is exactly what that class is. And I'm just telling it to click that, which will automatically assign me to the issue and um, or the pull request. And then I'm adding a show modal or sidebar form. And what I'm doing with this, I'm going to open this up so you can just see. This is this is the easy one, right? This is just call it whatever you want. Here's your description. Add as many fields as you want. Um, just click add new field. You can do literally whatever you want here. Um, the most important thing to know is the name. I kept it simple. I just called them item numbers. Um, but, you know, the label is the text it shows there. I made the type checkbox so I could quickly check through them. And, you know, you can change your submit text button. The other thing you want to note, your location should be on the sidebar. So that way it actually pops up on the sidebar. Otherwise, it'll be a modal, which um, I don't find as helpful because I can't, like, close out of it and go actually look at my code and make sure I've done it. So that's all you need to configure for that. And then lastly, you just want to add the, just like there's a hide brick, there's also a show brick. And so what you want to do is add the show brick, use the exact same selector for that button. And this is the trickiest part, okay? Okay. Under conditions, you want this to only run if all of those items have been checked. 
And basically, this is the syntax for it. I'll copy and paste that so you don't have to write it out yourself. But basically, it's, you know, using these curly braces and you're saying something is true if that exists and that exists and that's true. Like, if all of those things are true. Um, so that's where, that's how we determine the logic for this. So, and then, yeah, that is, that is exactly how it works. And like I said, one of the reasons I kind of like it is because if this were a modal that popped up, it would get in the way because it's kind of blocking my screen while I'm trying to look through all my code. But since it's a checklist over here, I can actually scroll through and say, yep, everything's alphabetized in here. And I can, you know, keep that checklist up on the side while I'm actually trying to do it. So I'm going to make this extension public. Um, you'll be able to add it and kind of change whatever these fields you want on here. You can delete any, add some more. Um, and if, you, if you're only changing the labels, you shouldn't need to make any changes at all to this. Uh, it should be pretty good to run as is. Actually, you might need to change this to be your repo you're most interested in. But um, if you are not, um, yeah, if you want to leave this as is, you should be able to, to just run with it if you adjust your trigger. So hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. I would love to help you build some cool sidebars. Um, if you have any other ideas, let me know. I'm looking for ideas of things to build. So if you're ever like, man, I wish I had a checklist for this or that when I'm doing that, or I wish I could have this information up on the side, um, just let me know because I would love to try to make something.